Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I, male, 25, met May, female, 25, in my first year of college. She was obviously a new student like the rest of us, but it wasn't just that. She was here all the way from Asia. It was her first time being here, just for college, and I could immediately make that out as she looked very confused on the first day. I mean, the education system in our country can be pretty confusing. I have cousins in Asia, so I know. Apparently, things had gotten even harder for her as she wasn't even here for the college induction. So, of course, the extrovert in me observed her confused state for a couple of days and decided to approach her. And even though her English wasn't the best, we were able to communicate and get along pretty well. We became friends and started exploring the city together. I mean, the city was new to me as well. It wasn't like I had lived all my life here, but once again, being in the United States, I knew just a bit more than her, and that helped to explore the city well. It was great. We always had a great time together. Eventually, she would also bring a couple of her girlfriends with her, and I'd bring mine too, and soon I found myself falling for her. I'm not going to take up your time and go on and on about my love for her. I mean, I love her and still do. But when I met her, she was just so different. She was kind, loving, helpful, gentle, curious, adventurous, and regardless of the cultural and language barriers between the two of us, I could just see the pureness and warmth that lay in my heart. Now, even though I'm finding myself questioning all of it, all her words and acts of affirmation, upliftment, and kindness just tell me, was I wrong for falling for it? When she came forward and handed it all to me herself? You all be the judge of that while I continue the tale of horror that I'm currently going through. Well, after months of hanging out mindlessly around the city, bar hopping every weekend, and grabbing brunch the next morning, my feelings for her couldn't contain themselves. Hell, my feelings were so obvious that my and her friends, too, started teasing me about it. I knew I had to take a step, and I did. I asked her out on the night of Halloween. Of course, the 18-year-old me must have predicted that this relationship was going to be a horror nightmare, lol. Well, I was standing there expecting a no from her, but surprisingly, she just pulled me into a kiss and the rest is history. We began dating, and whatever we had between us became ten times better. Being with May made me feel a connection that I had never felt, and the foolish me thought she did the same. I mean, all her actions screamed of it. Of course, though, it took me until now to realize that. Now that I think hard about it, even though her actions and words were sweet and covered in honey, maybe she might have dropped her mask. It all started after us dating for a couple of years. It was around the time of graduation. May had informed me that her parents were going to be here for the very first time after all these years of just her visiting them every spring and winter break. Now, like how anyone else would be, I was excited because she had promised me that she would introduce me to them. Hell, I still remember that day. I had dressed up so well for them because I was so in love that I wanted to make a good first impression. I even learnt some of her language so that we could speak in ease and soon the day of our graduation day arrived. I was nervous, both to receive my degree but particularly to meet her parents. I still can recall the way my heart started beating in nervousness when May walked towards me with them. I blurted out a hello in their native language and they seemed very happy. May just introduced me by my name and although I had a small ouch moment in my heart, I let it go. Making small conversation with them, then it happened. May's parents calling me a good friend and May just agreeing with them, telling them that I indeed was one. Not gonna lie, it really hurt that day but I was soon going to get used to it because I was going to find out that May was just going to run me in circles and man, 
She was so good at it that I kept falling for it. I kept falling for her stupid little traps over and over until I reached this point. She continued to show signs and I continued to be blinded by them. I was so deeply in love with her that after having her work for two years after graduation, I proposed to her and she's been staying at home ever since. I had absolutely no problem with that, but the only thing I had a problem with, like I said, was her not telling her parents and friends back there about me. Hell, she wouldn't even take me back there, telling me she wouldn't want to unless we're married. And man, the reasons she gave me were good. Strict parents, threats of being disowned, yada yada. I mean, if she was going to be one day or the other, why not just take the step and live with your head held up high? Of course, she had a reason for that too. She wanted to get married because she wanted the security before she could tell her parents. All of it made perfect sense to me back then, but now, nope. I was so stupid and dumb. Hell, I didn't even find out about all of this in any normal way. I quite literally got a slap in the face. It all started two days back. I went out for a week-long work trip. I returned a couple of days earlier and May was out for a girl's vacation. I returned home and knew May wasn't there. That was my red flag one, but I chalked it up to her extending her vacation. So I tried to make myself comfortable, but first, wanting to take a warm shower, I tried to get inside my room, which is surprisingly locked. None of our rooms have locks because they have security cameras which are manual, meaning they only work when I turn them on. So I'm kind of confused at all of this and start calling May. No response. Okay, I think to myself that she might be busy with her friends, so just sit it out for a couple of hours. Now it's around evening and I'm starting to get worried. So I first decided to call a locksmith to get the door open and thankfully, my friend being one, it happened quick and easy. This is when my world starts falling apart. My room is a mess. All my clothes are taken out of my closet and I immediately walk inside along with my friend who is as shocked as me. I began navigating the room and my first instinct is to take as many pictures as possible because I can immediately see some of my expensive stuff missing. I can also see a laptop laying on my bed, which looks like it doesn't belong to either me or May. So I decided to open it up and there it is. As soon as I reboot it, I'm greeted with a logged in Facebook account of some dude who seems like is from the same country as May. I open up the messages and my heart falls into my stomach as I sit there and look at a Facebook account obviously belonging to May, which I absolutely had no idea about. I immediately click on the chat and find messages after messages of lovey-dovey convoys, NSFW exchanges, and me. Yes, they were also talking to me and someone who I believe is supposedly the guy's girlfriend. The two were talking a hell lot of smack about us, talking about how they were excited to get citizenship and leave us back like fools. My heart broke into a million pieces and thank God, if my friend wasn't present that day, I would have made some stupid decision. I took as many screenshots and evidence as I possibly could because I knew it'd be helpful. The next thing I did was get the locks on the door changed with the help of the same locksmith friend and have moved out myself for a couple of days. I haven't heard anything from May till now and I'm just sitting here confused, thinking about what to do. So, Reddit, bring in your suggestions and judgments. AITA? It didn't take long after I left the house with the locks changed. May started blowing up my phone, asking me where I was. She was going crazy and was under the assumption that someone else had broken into our house and changed the locks. Um, how? I knew even though I didn't want to talk to her, I had to pick up the call. I simply just told her to go stay with her friend until I get back in town so that we can meet and figure this out. I'm pretty sure my calmness must have given her some hints, but at this point, I don't really care. 
I'm just going to take this time to think and clear my head out. I finally met up with May today, at a public place like many of you all suggested. I guess she realized herself what was going to happen, and it was good because I didn't want to spend any more of my time explaining things to her. So I met her and put things straight. I'd be lying if I didn't shed a few tears while talking to her. Oh boy, she took full advantage of that later on to try to manipulate me. I didn't let her have it though. I made her vomit out her entire pathetic lie while pretending to want to get back with her and she did so easily. She told me that guy was actually from her home country and they were friends before moving to the USA. He lived in another state and would often meet and all throughout the span of our relationship they were having one themselves. Hell, even all the time she visited her home country, she visited it with him. All of her family knew of her relationship. All the while, the two of them had different relationships on the side to get citizenship. I was dumbfounded at how well elaborated their plans were. But after getting all of the story and closure, I didn't wait any longer and told her that we were done. That is when the crocodile tears began, and I knew I wasn't going to fall for them again. So I just got up and left. Hi, everyone. Here's a final update. I did end up messaging May's boyfriend's girlfriend on Facebook with all the screenshots, and she was very shocked and surprised. We even had a call and talked about the entire situation, and she seemed very glad because they were going to get married the very next year. As for May's family, I messaged them with our pictures as well, and although we had some struggle to communicate, eventually her English speaking cousins. Taking over the chat helped a lot. We had a short call too, where they told me that they were extremely disappointed in May, so much so that she wasn't welcome back here. They even apologized to me on her behalf, and it felt really nice to hear at least someone taking accountability. So apparently, she's living in a beat down apartment, trying to find a new job because her affair partner wants nothing to do with her and wants to try things out with his real girlfriend instead. Well, God bless them, I guess, and thank you all. NTA, kick to the curb. She's a walking red flag, my dude. No girl is ever worth so much of your energy. NTA, sue for stealing and for damages. What a horrible human being. I got married this weekend and everything was absolutely perfect except for one of my brothers and his wife. They caused a fair amount of drama and I don't know how to handle it going forward. I'll start off by saying my brother was annoyed that he did not have a spot in my wedding. I did not have a spot in his and my college friends were my groomsmen. We didn't have ushers and my wife's cousin DJ because he offered and had the setup. Since he was annoyed, we decided to offer a role to help with guest book and gifts and thought that would soothe it some. My brother and his wife left the rehearsal dinner early the day before the wedding and another family member heard them trying to come up with excuses as to how to leave early. Whatever, just a rehearsal dinner, didn't care that much. That evening before the wedding, his wife complained to me that she didn't know what she was going to eat since our dinner at the wedding was breakfast for dinner and she has some obscure food allergies that she disregards all the time when we go out to eat anyway. She knew about the wedding meal being breakfast for dinner for two years and just mentioned that she could only eat fruit since she has an allergy to butter all of a sudden. Please keep in mind she eats at restaurants regularly, never asks for no butter, and has burgers and fries at fast food places all the time. I told her she could bring something to tide her over till cake, or leave and get food and come back if she needs to, and left it at that. Wedding day come around, she's complaining all day that all she can eat is fruit, and what we could do to accommodate her. My sister said my sister-in-law complained the whole dinner without being so hungry and only being able to eat fruit. She didn't talk to us at the wedding at all, and my brother took my sister-in-law away for an hour and a half to get food, then didn't come back at all for the rest of the wedding. 
My brother and sister-in-law tried to get my parents and grandma to leave with them before the cake and first dances took place as well. My brother and sister-in-law refused to come to any family things the entire weekend too. My grandma and mother are pissed at them. My dad is trying to stay out of it. My wife and I are incredibly hurt because it felt like they didn't want to be there and made the day about them. Then, on top of it, tried to take the rest of the family away from the wedding when they wanted to leave before the cake cutting and first dances, including the dance of my own mother. I am not talking to them at the moment and intend to have a conversation about how they were disrespectful and this wasn't their day, it was ours. I think it's even more hurtful that my brother complained about not having a role in our wedding. But even after getting a role, not only did he not do the role, but he and his wife acted like they didn't want to be there the whole weekend. But I could be wrong, A-I-T-A? Your N-T-A, however. I would advise against speaking to them about it. They know why they did and are waiting for the drama so they can play victim. Ice them out. Ignore them like you would a spoiled child throwing a tantrum. Any family events, just keep your distance. Their behavior was atrocious and you don't have to engage. Also, breakfast for dinner is tops. NTA. Did they at any point give you advance warning about their food sensitivity so that you could arrange for something on the menu that she could have besides fruit? I'm guessing they didn't. Therefore, they have no room to complain and your brother is not owed a role at your wedding, especially since you didn't get one at his. I agree with you. They were determined to make the day about them. My daughter's father and I divorced shortly after she was born because he refused to keep any of his promises and the relationship had just caused both of us too much pain. I posted about it on here years ago, but I don't remember the username. He decided he didn't want to be a father, so he signed his custody rights away and only pays child support. I reconnected with an ex of mine soon after. We're now married and we're raising both my child and our baby together. My ex pays child support. With how we budget for our household, this money falls outside of household needs and is closer to extra money. We've decided that instead of trying to work this into the budget, we're just going to put it entirely into college funds for the kids, 50-50. My ex has heard about this and is furious that I'm using his money for a kid that's not even his and stealing from our daughter. I'm not. My husband and I are equally contributing to two children who live in the same household full time. If we're splitting our money for the children's needs and the needs of the household equally, then extra money should be split equally across the household as well, should it not? After all, it's perfectly acceptable and expected for child support to go to paying utilities and mortgages when other people live in the household too. Would it be suddenly different if I was using it to pay the mortgage and then using the leftover $1,000 that would create in our budget to put in their college funds? Obviously not, because ultimately money is fungible. He doesn't agree and is blasting me to anyone that will listen. His mom, who we sometimes see, is taking his side and has been berating me about it since she heard. I don't think it's her business or that I'm doing anything wrong. Am I in the wrong here? NTA, but why word it this way? Just say the child support is going to your daughter and that you and your husband are putting your own money into the college fund instead. YTA, I understand your line of thinking, but it doesn't work in this situation. He's supporting his daughter and no other child. That's the purpose of child support. You used the example of it being used in the mortgage instead. That's different. If you truly didn't have the funds and the child support was used to help pay rent or mortgage, then that would be creating housing support for his child. The other child would just happen to benefit as well. But notice I said, if you didn't have the funds. In this case, you have the funds. You are providing a decent standard of living for both children and the child support is just extra but it's specifically meant to help his daughter, point blank. 
YTA simply for calling the child support extra money. I hope there's no record of you saying that in text. He could easily take you to court and get a reduction in support, showing proof that you call it extra money. His sole purpose in giving you money is to provide for his child. He doesn't care about you, your new husband, or your baby. I don't know how you do your budget, but I would readjust it because your mindset is so off on this subject.